Colleen Tressler joining us from the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. Colleen, are you there? I am here, Hillary. Thank you. Glad to have you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, my presentation is going to be on child identity theft. And I think this will really be useful not only for the educators and students, but also parents and guardians. Um, so just keep that in mind as I move ahead. I think the best thing to do to start this off is to give you a really short definition of identity theft. It's really the misuse of another person's information. Um, that could be to obtain you know, goods and services, but we have found people using identities to hide from law enforcement, government, and um, you know, if they're looking for a job and maybe their picture isn't quite so clean, they try to pretend to be somebody else to get employment. Now the next slide just gives you some types of personal information. Um, and this is, this is information, whether you're young or older, that you really need to um, keep private for the most part or really understand why somebody's asking for it. Um, I highlight social security numbers because they're especially attractive to thieves. They can be used for um, tax identity theft and new account ID theft, which I'll expand on a little bit later. Now the next slide is really to just give you the numbers, kind of the big picture here as to what we're seeing. The first number of 17.6 million comes from the U.S. Department of Justice and that's the number of identity theft victims they, um, I'm not going to say see, but forecasted I guess for 2014. Um, and that represents roughly 7% of the U.S. population. Now the FTC received nearly half a million complaints about identity theft in 2015 um, and in 2016 that number dropped to nearly 400,000. So you might be wondering why does DOJ have such a large number and why does the FTC have a smaller number? <clears throat> the numbers that we get are just the people that report identity theft to us. So the larger number is what we can actually expect is happening out in the marketplace. So the next slide is also some numbers. It really is showing identity theft complaint trends. And you can see that 2015 was indeed a big year. Um, that's when identity theft complaints increased by more than 47% from 2014. And that was on the back of a massive jump in complaints about tax identity theft from consumers. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is credit reports. And um, John, I just want to echo what he said. For adults, the best way adults can help prevent against identity theft is to review their credit report on a regular basis. The three major credit reporting agencies, which are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, are required by law to provide you with a free copy of your credit report once a year. And again, that address, that web address is annualcreditreport.com. And what we here at the FTC generally recommend is that you stagger your request for your credit report. So here it is, beginning of a new year. Maybe you want to contact and pull one from Equifax. If you notice anything in error, uh, you want to take care of that. Once that has been investigated and corrected, that credit reporting agency has to report it to the other two. So hopefully, if three or four months down the road, you pull another credit report from one of the other credit reporting agencies, you shouldn't find any mistakes. Um, but just to back up for a second, you see in the, uh, in the slide basically what a credit report um, includes and chances are you've all had to to have your credit report pulled whether it be for employment to get a loan a mortgage car note um, etc okay now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of my presentation on child identity theft and so we're saying kids turning 16 it's time to check their credit report um, you know, whether they're getting scholarships, financial aid, looking for their first job or buying their first car, they're going to have a credit report pulled, you would think. Um, so in the middle of preparing the paperwork, you, you might get a nasty surprise. What is supposed to be a clean report isn't. 
Um, I mean, young teens aren't even legally um, able to open credit accounts on their own, so you wouldn't expect them to have a credit report. And the reason that we say age 16 is that it gives young people time to correct errors due to fraud or misuse before they apply for a job, not a loan for tuition or a car, or need a credit check to rent an apartment. So if indeed you pull your, your child's or your student um, credit report and there's erroneous information, you can pretty much expect that it is um, the result of identity theft. So moving on to the next slide where we talk about the value of a child's social security number to identity thieves. Um, it can be used by thieves to apply for tax refunds and government benefits, open bank and credit card accounts, apply for loans or utility services, or even um, rent a place to live. And you may not be aware, over the last few years or so, medical identity theft has become a big issue. And that's where people are using someone else's personal information to get medical services, prescriptions, and so on. Um, and we have some specific information on that if you're more interested. Um, like I said before, um, one reason children's identities are so attractive to thieves is that they usually have clean credit. And because most people don't know or don't check their kids' credit reports, the theft can go undetected for years. But the FTC's education and outreach efforts are really trying to change this. So even if you don't suspect identity theft, it's still a good idea to see if there is a credit file on your child and if needed take action immediately. So the next slide is talking a little bit about tax identity theft. This is something I mentioned earlier and you can see you know basically what it entails and some statistics. Um, that big year again was 2015 with 43 uh, excuse me a little over 45 percent of all theft complaints to the FTC pertaining to taxes and wages. Um, and I want to say, you know, that tax identity theft has become such a big issue that a week has been designated to raise awareness and to offer tips to help people protect themselves. And um, tax identity theft 2017 actually began yesterday, and it runs through February 3rd. Um, this is where federal, state, and local officials and law enforcement agencies are participating to educate the public about tax identity theft. So. If you want more information, we have a real quick and easy uh, website. It's ftc.gov slash tax ID theft. Okay, so now getting back to child identity theft, um, Hillary mentioned to me that some teachers that she's spoken with have had students whose personal information has been used by a family member or someone else. So I really want to take a moment to talk about this. Um, you know, the good news is that the identity theft can be cleared up simply by showing the child was a minor at the time the charge or charges were incurred and otherwise, you know, by showing their birth certificate. So they don't need to worry about reporting it to the police if they're reluctant to do so. Um, you know, um, the bad news, there's always good news, there's bad news, is that um, when a parent invo is involved, in this instance, a teacher may be able to help a child clear up the identity theft if the child can get a copy of their birth certificate to send to creditors and credit bureaus. Um, but one word of, of caution here, and you know, as I was talking to Hillary about this, we really don't think that parents and guardians and others understand the ramifications of using a child's personal information. Sometimes this is really about survival. So before helping the students and their family, we encourage anyone who wants to help to make sure they know the full story um, about what's going on in that household so that don't, don't inadvertently do more harm than good. Um, and if anybody, you know, wants to, to talk offline, you know, my contact information is there and, and I can try to help you. Now, in addition to family members using personal information, I want to mention real quickly something about children in foster care. You know, these kids move from household to household and their information travels with them. And sometimes people take advantage of that. 
Um, so in 2011, Congress passed legislation to help youth in foster care better protect their credit. And so that means that when foster youth turn 16, child welfare agencies are required to get their annual credit reports and then help the youth clear up any problems. Um, and it's really about letting them have a clear path to, to getting out there in the workplace and not have to worry about identity theft. Things have been hard enough on them as it is. So um, the FTC worked with an organization called Child Focus and the Annie Casey Foundation to produce the free guide Youth and Credit Protecting the Credit of Youth in Foster Care. And that really is a step-by-step -step guide to helping these young people um, through this issue. Okay, the next slide I want to talk about is how you find out if a child has a credit report. And unlike adults that can just go to annualcreditreport.com, the process is a little bit different for young people. You need to contact the three major credit bureaus. Again, it's Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And the contact information is there on the slide. You want to ask them to conduct what's called a manual search for the child's social security number. Now, each bureau has its own process for this, but it's probably fairly similar. And if a credit bureau has a credit report for the child, they will send you a copy. Um, when they do the manual search, the companies will check for files relating to the child's name and social security number and for files related only to the child's social security number. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about in the next slide the steps you take if you find out a child is indeed a victim of identity theft. The first thing is to call the company where the fraud occurred. Um, the next is to ask the company to close the fraudulent account and send you a confirmation of that. You want to send a follow-up letter including the um, minor's declaration and there's a link to that um, on our website at identitytheft.gov. And of course, as you do any business, you want to make a note of who you contacted and when and keep copies of um, all correspondence. And just to clarify, the minor status declaration is really a voluntary declaration for establishing that a child is indeed a minor. Okay, that's step one. So step two is to remove fraudulent accounts. You send a letter to each of the credit bureaus indicating the child was a minor at the time. Include a copy of the child's birth certificate. Um, you request a credit freeze. This makes it more difficult for someone to use the child's social security number to open accounts. Now, a credit freeze is also known as a security freeze, and it lets you restrict access to your credit report, which in turn, like I said, makes it more difficult for people to open accounts. This is something, with all these data breaches we're having and the rise in identity theft, even if you don't feel as though you've been compromised, you may want to consider it for yourself. Um, there is a minor charge. I think in Maryland I might have paid 5 or $10 per credit bureau. The only um, caveat with that is if you have a security freeze or credit freeze in place and you want to apply for a loan um, or you need to have your credit report checked for employment, you need to basically thaw it. And there is an additional fee like five or ten dollars for that. Um, if you're concerned about, you know, thawing all three credit reports, you can ask the um, um, a creditor or employer, well, which one of the three credit reporting agencies are you going to be pulling from? And then, you know, chances are you only have to lift um, the freeze on that particular one. Okay, so um, we talked about up to step three, and then the, the step four, really, we want to hear about it. We really want to help. Um, people who are experiencing identity theft recover from it. So that's why we tell people to go to identitytheft.gov. And the next slide gives you a, a real quick and dirty image on a, a laptop. Um, identitytheft.gov is the federal government's one-stop resource for reporting and recovering from identity theft. It gives people personal recovery plans, forget this, over 30 types of identity theft. 
It provides step-by-step -step guidance to help people carry out their recovery plan, and it generates pre-filled letters and forms for, for people to send to credit bureaus, creditors, debt collectors, and others to help resolve the problems. Okay, the next slide is an image of the homepage. And I just want to say, we didn't just put this together and slap it up. It was designed with extraordinary attention to usability. So we did a lot of testing. Um, language, infographics, and even the color scheme were developed with the idea of making this as easy as possible for people to recover from what can be a really devastating fraud. Um, on the home page, the website explains how its recovery process works. And in, you might not be able to see it too well on the slide, but in the upper right-hand corner in blue is the link that would take you to the Spanish version of the site. And on that point, I just want to say everything that the FTC prepares as far as consumer education and information is produced in English as well as in Spanish. And depending on the subject matter or the audience, other languages as well. Okay, so we're getting ready to close this presentation up. So I just want to give some tips to help you keep personal information secure. Um, you know, there are four main ways to do it. Know who you share information with. This is basically something John said earlier. Store and dispose of your personal information securely, especially your social security number. Ask questions before deciding to share your information and maintain appropriate security on your computers and other electronic devices. Um, these are just, you know, real quick snippets in a publication we produce um, called How to Keep Your Personal Information Secure. And teachers, I know you love to hear the word free. All the information from the Federal Trade Commission is free, available in bulk and single copies. You can print things off of the web. Um, you can use it in whole or in part, it's totally up to you. So the next slide is really our free resources and um, they have little explanations there as to, uh, to what you can find. The Annie Casey Foundation for the Foster Youth is listed there at the bottom. And I thought you might like a few suggestions um, on the slide um, for classroom activities. So there's some things here, you know, you can print some fact sheets off from the FTC site. You can, believe it or not, if you still use newspapers in the classroom, you can pull newspaper articles or pull things down off the web um, and just, you know, have a conversation with the kids. You can share um, our FTC video and then ask questions, kind of just have a very informal discussion in your classroom. And then we also refer People, we don't normally prepare lesson plans, but we know you like that. So we often work with um, Common Sense Media, which has an arm called Common Sense Education, and they do have lesson plans specifically for identity theft. So I think with two minutes to spare before um, Tim gets started, I can take a few questions if there are any. We did have some questions, and thank you so much, Colleen. Um, first, as a point of clarification, the slides will be made available from both presenters um, after the two webinars today, so most likely sometime tomorrow. Um, all of the links from your last two slides are also in the um, note taker that's available in the link that I posted in the chat, and it was also available in the reminder um, about the email um, or about the webinar. Uh, one question that came up, um, do all states have credit freeze laws in place um, that you're aware of, Colleen? I think it's the vast majority. I don't think it's 100%, but I think it's the vast majority. Great. Um, and another question, do you still have to pay for the credit scores? You get the, the report for free on the annual credit report, but do you have to pay for the scores? You do have to pay for the score at annualcreditreport.com. Um, but, you know, scores are becoming um, more available. Um, you know, there are certain credit card issuers who are providing them as a, a, a perk for their credit card users. Um, but there again, just be careful when you go to purchase one online. Please read the fine print because sometimes you are um, getting into um, a more expensive program than you might might think you are, you might be committing to more than you realize. 
Thank you. Yes, uh, we were contacting our mortgage issuer the other day, and they offered a free credit score. We were sort of surprised by that. Uh, so yes, more and more um, are doing so. Um, and uh, I think that's all. I think we had a repeat question um, or oh, comment from somebody that said that you can get free FICO um, scores from Discover Card. Um, that was one that I was also aware of. Yeah, um, that's the one I was thinking of. I just didn't want to brand anybody. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have to be more cautious than I do. You, you have the, you have the, 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 the sway of the, the FTC behind you. So. Right. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Colleen. We really appreciate that. And I know that the, the teachers that are on the line um, certainly do as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.